Good evening, St. Rest. How blessed of God we are to share in Bible study tonight. Uh, we're continuing in our series, One Another. Tonight, we will look at Galatians chapter 6, verse number 2. Bear one another's burdens. Bear one another's burdens from Galatians chapter 6, verse 2. We'll pray. We'll read the scripture and then see what God has to say to us tonight. God, our Father, we bless your name. We thank you for uh, this day. We thank you for the blessings that you have showered on us. We thank you for the privilege of your word. We thank you that your word exists. We thank you that your word is powerful and that your word stands the test of time. Grass withers, flowers fade, but the word of God stands forever. And God, more than anything else, we need your word. So we thank you that you have given us a free space to study and hear what you have to say to us in these times. Pray now, God, that you would show us those things you'd have us to see. Speak those things you'd have us to hear. Teach us what you'd have us to learn so we can be who you've called us to be. More importantly, do what you've called us to do. Even now, Lord, sit Michael down. Allow them to see and hear Jesus, not me. Let your word go forth with both accuracy and clarity that your people be edified and you be glorified. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Again, we're talking about bearing one another's burdens uh, from Galatians chapter 6, verse number 2. The English Standard Version, it reads, Bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. Now, as a recap, we have learned through this series that we as Christians have a responsibility to one another as a family of faith. The church is not the building church is not just a structure of congregation. The church is a family. As you know, families don't always get along. Families do have differences, but God has called us to come together as a family of faith to function as a church. And as a family, we have a responsibility to care for one another. And the ultimate reason why is because Christ died to make us a family. Jesus shed his blood at Calvary, not only to pay for our sins, but to reconcile us back together to the Father and bring us together as the church. If for no other reason, we need to get along and care for one another because Jesus shed his blood for us to be a family, and for us to be the church. And as we've learned in previous weeks, scripture tells us what our responsibilities are to one another. We've learned that we need to love one another. We need to serve one another. We need to encourage one another. And then we need to bear one another's burdens. When you look at this verse, what it means to bear one another's burdens, it means to walk with fellow Christians through difficult seasons of life. Uh, this lesson is important and relevant in our time because we're dealing with this uh, postmodern time of what's called the cancel culture. Uh, the cancel culture is where people withdraw support from a figure or a celebrity after they've done something that people consider offensive or objectionable. Uh, right now, if you're paying attention into social media and the Hollywood uh, platform, Dave Chappelle is facing much criticism and a lot of heat right now because of his recent stand up on Netflix. And some of the jokes he's made about the transgender community and the LGBTQ community. And many people are calling for him to be canceled because of some statements he made in that stand up. Uh, in modern culture, that's really what happens now. When people see you do something they consider offensive, when they see you do something that they don't agree with or something that is objectionable, everyone calls for you to be quote unquote canceled. Uh, it's a very tense, vulnerable, and sensitive time because many people call for people to be canceled because it goes against what they believe or what they stand for. And there is some good that comes from this cancel culture. It's good for accountability because we do need to hold people accountable when they do some things that are not right. But it's also bad because it eliminates us from being compassionate about people and giving them grace to grow up and develop and mature. And as we look at this text, we learn that Christians are not called 
to be part of the cancel culture. We are called to be a culture of compassion. If we cancel somebody, we are going against what God has done for us. Jesus Christ at Calvary did not cancel us. We were dead in our sins, dead in trespasses, full of sin and full of wrongdoing, and God did not cancel us. Instead, he showed his compassion towards us by sending Jesus Christ to die for our sins. That's why scripture says that while we were yet sinners, while we were yet enemies against God, God didn't cancel us. He showed compassion for us and sent Christ to die for us. And since God did that for us, we have a responsibility to do the same thing for other individuals. We need to bear one another's burdens. And that's what Paul says in verse two, Philippi, I mean, excuse me, Galatians chapter six, where he says, bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. Now, as you look at this verse in its context, Paul is making the argument to live in step with the spirit. In chapter five, he talks about us being free. We have been made free in Christ and we're made free not to commit the works of the flesh. We are made free to produce the fruits of the spirit. He talks about the works of the flesh, the many things we do in our bodies that goes against the will of God. And he also talks about the fruit of the spirit that produces in us the attributes of God. Many works, one fruit, and that one fruit produces many attributes of who God is, that we need to be patient, we need to be kind, we need to be loving, have self-control. All those things are mentioned in Galatians chapter 5. And as you look at the end of Galatians chapter 5, in verses 25 and 26, Paul says, If we live by the Spirit, let us also keep in step with the Spirit. And here's how you do it. Let us not become conceited, provoking one another or envying one another. Part of living in the spirit and staying in step with the spirit is not having a conceited attitude. It's not provoking one another or envying one another because they're doing well, they have something you want, or they're living a life that you think you should live. If you're gonna live in the spirit, be part of the spirit. It's not just about how you lift your hands and say hallelujah. It's also how you treat other individuals and making sure that you don't become conceited, you don't become arrogant, you don't provoke others to anger, nor do you become jealous because God is blessing them in their lives in ways you think you should be blessed. So that's how he ends Galatians chapter 5. And then he continues that thought in chapter 6 by saying, listen, if anyone is caught in any transgression, you who are spiritual should restore him in a spirit of gentleness. You need to keep watch on yourself, lest you too be tempted. Bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. He tells him in verse one, restore those who have transgressed, those who have committed sins, who are in the household of faith. And you need to be mindful of that because they may fall today, but you may fall tomorrow. And you want somebody to be in your corner when you fall. And in verse two, he tells these Christians at Galatia, bear one another's burdens. That word bear in the original language means to lift and carry. It paints the picture of a spotter who is watching over somebody who's lifting weights. If you've ever been in the gym, if you've ever done any serious weight lifting, you normally will call for somebody to spot you and check you as you're lifting the weights. Because while you're lifting weights, the load may get too heavy to the point where you can't bear it by yourself. So as you're bench pressing or as you're lifting the weights, you want the spotter to be there to help you either lift the burden so you can push it up or to get the weight off of you so you don't hurt yourself. Really, that's what Paul is telling the church, that you need to spot other Christians and help them when they deal with difficult, weighty seasons in their lives. This word bear is the same word used in Matthew chapter 18, 8 verse 17, where it says that Christ bore our transgressions. Now, when you look at the example of what Jesus did at Calvary, Jesus didn't do the crime, but he paid the time. 
he was not guilty of the sin, but he paid the sentence for our sins. He didn't do it. He understood that we did it, but he was willing to bear the weight of sin at Calvary for the sake of the brethren. And that's the same attitude. That's the same sentiment. That's the same uh, feel we should have for bearing one another's burdens. Even though we haven't done it, even though we didn't commit it, we should be willing to be with somebody and stand with them in moments where they have not done everything right. Now, let's make this clear. This is not an excuse to endorse sin. This is not a moment where you should enable someone to continue to live in sin. As Paul tells the Romans, shall we continue in sin so grace may abound? God forbid. If you know someone is consciously living in sin without remorse, without repentance, this is not a moment for you to endorse their sin. If you know somebody loves getting drunk, this is not a moment for you to go get the bottle to help them get drunk. If you know somebody enjoys being under the influence, this is not a moment for you to endorse it by you going to be their drug person and get those drugs. No, this is not an endorsement of sin. This encourages us that if Christ put up with our shortcomings, we shouldn't be so quick to dismiss others because they have shortcomings. God loved you when you weren't right. God loved you when you were in sin. And the same love that God has for you, he calls for us to have with other individuals when they don't always get it right. And we all can be honest, every day we don't get it right. There's something we do at some point in the day that is not pleasing to God or does not line up with the will of God. We don't always get it right, yet God still loves us and walks with us in spite of. That's the same thing we need to do when we're bearing one another's burdens. If you know somebody's in transgression, somebody's in sin, don't be so quick to cancel them. Show compassion and love them through it and love them in spite of it. Not because you endorse what they're doing, but because you endorse the God you serve and he has called you to bear one another's burdens. But as we look at this text too, we also learn that burdens are not just sin. Notice Paul does not just say bear one another's transgressions. He says bear one another's burdens. Burdens can be sin, but they can also be difficulties in life. You can deal with physical burdens through sickness. You can deal with emotional burdens through grief. You can deal with mental burdens through depression. You can deal with financial burdens through unemployment, hard times, and unexpected loss. And the Bible tells us that we are called to bear one another's burdens when we have those difficult seasons of life. When you see your brother or your sister going through some difficult moments, you as a fellow believer are called to help them bear those burdens, to be with them, to walk with them in the most difficult seasons of life. So if you know somebody is sick, pray for them. Call them to see how they're doing. Help them in their time of recovery. If you know someone is dealing with bereavement and grief, check on them. Send them a card. Call them and say, hey, I just want to check and see how you're doing. Take them to lunch. Spend some time with them to lift their spirits. If you know somebody is dealing with mental burdens, with depression, share a con word with them. Encourage them. Be there and give them a space to unburden their souls. Just listen and hear them talk. If somebody's dealing with a financial burden and God puts it on your heart, bless somebody. If you know someone is struggling and you know they can't make ends meet and you feel God tugging at your heart to bless them, do it. Give them some lunch money so they can get something to eat. Or just put something in their hands and say, listen, God put it on my heart to bless you in this moment. Burdens are not just sin. They are difficult moments in our lives. And whether it's physical, emotional, mental, or financial, we need to bear one another's burdens and walk with one another through every difficult season of life. It may be their day today, but it could be yours tomorrow. And you don't want, want to walk through difficult seasons by yourself. We have a family of faith. We have a body of believers who have been called by God to help us bear the burdens of difficult seasons in our lives. And if you see that happening in your own sphere, in your own community, 
Help those individuals bear those burdens. Walk with them, pray with them, encourage them. Do whatever is necessary that is in your heart to do to help them bear the burdens they face in their life. And if you look at the text, Paul explains the reason why we need to bear one another's burdens. He says it at the end of verse number two, and so fulfill the law of Christ. When you bear one another's burdens, you are not just helping somebody deal with the difficult seasons of life. You are fulfilling the command that God has given us through the Lord Jesus Christ. Here, when it talks about the law of Christ, it's referring to the law of love. And we learn what that law is in Galatians chapter 3, verses 13 and 14. Let's go there. Galatians chapter 3, verses 13. Excuse me. Galatians chapter 5, verses 13 and 14. Galatians chapter 5 verses 13 and 14 the bible says for you are called to freedom brothers only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for the flesh but through love serve one another for the whole law is fulfilled in one word you shall love your neighbor as yourself so when you're looking at what the law ultimately means, what is the heart and the intent of the law, the Bible says you fulfill the law when you meet this obligation. Love your neighbor as yourself. That's why Jesus tells his disciples in John 13 and 35, by this shall all men know that you are my disciples, that you have love one for another. You fulfill God's law when you help others bear the burdens of the difficult seasons of their lives. So that's why we can't be a cancel culture. That's why we can't throw anybody away when they're dealing with some burdens in their life. That's why we can't throw them away if they're struggling in sin and they're trying to get out. We have to be a culture of compassion because God has called us as his children, as the family of faith, to bear one another's burdens. It reminds me of the song that Bill Withers penned a song I believe should be a hymn of the church. Lean on me when you're not strong. I'll be your friend and I'll help you carry on. For it won't be long till I'm going to need somebody to lean on. So call on me, brother, when you need a hand because we all need somebody to lean on. You can call on me, sister, when you don't understand because we all need somebody to lean on. God has called us to bear one another's burdens. God, our Father, we thank you tonight for this lesson. We thank you for showing us what it means to bear one another's burdens and why we should do so. We are called to fulfill the law of Christ. I pray now, God, for those who are dealing with difficult seasons in their lives, whether they are struggling in sin, whether they're dealing with burdens physically, emotionally, mentally, or financially. God, I pray that you will not only bless them, but you will send them someone in the family of faith to help them bear those burdens they face in their life. Thank you, God, that you have given us a community, a, a family, a body of believers who can walk with us as we deal with burdens and difficult seasons in life. I pray, God, that this lesson blesses those it needs to bless, it convicts those that it needs to convict, and it encourages those that need encouragement. We pray, God, that your word will not return void, that it will accomplish whatever you please. We believe it done by faith in Jesus' name. Amen. We thank God for your presence tonight. We thank God for your attentiveness to this lesson. If you've been blessed by the ministry of St. Rest, and you've been blessed by this lesson tonight, we'll encourage you to give as God lays on your heart to do so. Here at St. Rest, we have several methods by which you can give. You can give physically. We do have a drop box available on campus. You can also give electronically through Givelify. PayPal, Cash App, and Google Pay. Several methods of giving, but the same mentality. God loves a cheerful giver. And I'm a living witness. You can't beat God giving, no matter how hard you try, because the more you give, the more God will give to you. So if you feel encouraged to give, we won't beg you. We're inviting you to take part in that worship experience that you can honor God through the contributions you give to our church. And to those who can continually contribute to our church. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate you and we appreciate God for your contributions. And please know we'll be a good steward of that which God blesses us through your contributions. 
uh, as we're closing, uh, we are getting excited about this coming weekend uh, where we get to celebrate one year as pastor and people here at the St. Rest Church. It has been a joy for me to serve this great congregation as we have gone through a pandemic year and God has blessed us tremendously in spite of the times where we are. So at 11 a.m. and 2.30 p.m., we will celebrate together what God has done through this union here at St. Rest. And we invite you to take part of those services. Whether you can be here physically or whether you watch virtually, we thank God for you. We pray that God blesses you during that time. And we look forward to a great time in the Lord as we celebrate what God has done here at St. Rest through pastor and people. Also, we're gearing up for our church anniversary, second Sunday in November, November the 14th. We will honor God for 136 years of God's faithfulness to the St. Rest Church. I am excited about that day. I'm excited about church anniversary, and I look forward to seeing so many wonderful faces of our members and former members as we honor God for what he has done in the life of St. Rest. Uh, Pastor F.D. Sampson Sr. will be our guest preacher, and I'm excited about his coming to Shreveport and his coming to St. Rest. I'm also excited about seeing you present as well. So if you're able to, whether virtually or physically, worship with us on the second Sunday in November as we honor God for our church anniversary. So we're coming to a time of prayer. Several prayer requests demand our attention. Let's keep Sister Romine lifted in prayer. Sister John V. F. Romine who has eye surgery, she's recovering from that, so we wanna keep her lifted in prayer. Uh, we also wanna pray for Sister Jackie Smith, who's been dealing with health complications, and other uh, of our church members are dealing with sickness. Let's keep the Johnson and Demery families lifted in prayer. Brother James Johnson, the brother of the late brother Joe Johnson, made his transition, and we're yet praying for them during this time of grief. Uh, funeral services are pending, but we're praying that God will give them comfort in this time of bereavement. There may be other prayer requests that you have. If you feel led to do so, comment and let us know how we can walk with you in prayer. We believe in the power of prayer here at St. Rest because we know God is able. As his children, he will hear us, and as our Father, he will answer us according to his will. So if you feel led, comment and let us know how we can walk with you in prayer because we want to see God do great things in your life. God, our Father, as we close tonight, Thank you for this privilege of prayer. Thank you that we can cast our cares on you because you care for us. God, you've heard the cries of your people. You've heard the requests made. I pray, God, that you will be with these families who are dealing with sickness, be with these families who are dealing with bereavement. I pray, God, you be with those who are watching this lesson. You know what's on their hearts and minds. You know what they stand in need of. Intervene like only you can. Do what no other power can do. Meet the needs in those vulnerable spaces of life that they can know and testify that only you provided what they needed. We love you and bless you for what you're going to do. We thank you in advance for what you've already done that we're still waiting to see come to pass. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.